Okay, we'll go ahead and get started then. We'll call the September 2nd meeting to order. Uh, first order business is the consent agenda. We have warrants PR2104, AP2107, AP2107S, AP2108, AP2108S, AP2109, AP2109S, AP2010, AP2010S, AP2011-2. Uh, we have a town administrator contract for Carolyn Brennan. The select board will sign that. The water tank fence bid award of the contract. We have a Hadley Police Department dispatch resignation of Barbara Nichols and Hadley Police Department resignation for Christian Lowell. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Second. Just and have a question on the uh, the fence thing. It, there was is there anything there for materials? I see Carolyn's contract. I don't see a fence material attached. David, do we have that? I'm pulling it right now. I'll load it right in. I'm sorry. I thought that. Okay. So let's pull the fence out and uh, move on with the others. So any further discussion on any of the others? Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. David, did you get that thing from the Attorney General's office with the uh, Zoom meetings I sent you? I did, yep. We're supposed to be doing a roll call for all our votes or at least make it clear that everybody says aye or nay. Yeah, I've been attempting when we vote, if I don't hear somebody or somebody talks over there to, at least from what I'm seeing, to call, to call them individually. So, um, I just, it looks like they had a lot of violations and they've been writing some people up for us. Where was that, John? Uh, I got it through the water. Uh, department, but uh, the AG's office sent a letter. I can send it to you, Joyce, and you can read it. Okay. Uh, violations for the Zoom meeting laws. Okay. I think as, as long as we make some comment, whether we yay or nay or abstain, I think yeah. we're okay. Yeah. But just, I guess it's a reminder, John, for all of us to speak up when we're voting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So just to be clear, that was 5-0 in favor of the consent agenda, correct? Yes, I, to be clear, I've not had any trouble differentiating and your minutes will reflect everybody's proper vote. Okay. Um, I also uh, loaded the bid tabulation sheet for the DPW water take fencing for everybody to see. Um, and GMH was the clear uh, low bid and they had good um, references that the DPW checked. So that is who the award goes to. It's GMH Fence Company out of East Long Meadow. They're about ten thousand dollars cheaper than anybody else there. It looks like. Yes. All right. Could I get a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Any further discussion on the DPW water fencing? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, abstain. Okay, so 401 on that. All right, moving on. Uh, public comments. If anybody has any public comments, uh, please turn your camera on, wave, or use the little raise hand button to get our attention. And we'll limit it to three minutes uh, per person. So anybody here for public comments? Joyce has some. I do. I think this would be an appropriate time to um, say our big thanks to David Nixon. Um, this is his last meeting that he is going to chair officially as our town administrator. On the 15th, uh, Carolyn Brennan will be taking over. Um, she'll have some shoes to fill, but luckily David will be along for the ride as a deputy town administrator um, to show her the ropes and get her acclimated to being town administrator. Um, 
I was on the screening committee. I hired David, and um, I haven't. I have been so pleased to have had him as our town administrator. He has worked extremely hard. I get emotional. Um, he has worked extremely hard for the town of Hadley in all aspects. Um, he certainly has taken a lot of bumps and grinds um, over the years. <laughs> He's shown that he has been strong. Um, he doesn't get into conflicts. He doesn't take sides. He always stays neutral. He always did. Um, he's just been a real good asset for the town of Hadley and um, I'd like to thank him for all of his years. Um, I certainly have enjoyed working with him for sure. Yeah, I'll just say that in the uh, screening process for the hiring of the new town administrator, uh, David is, is uh, certainly famous within the town administrator community because uh, it seems like every one of those 30-something people knew all about David and everything there was to know about David and his okay. the way he did business and the way Hadley was run. So um, uh, great job, David. Absolutely. Yeah, you leave quite a legacy, David. I know from just attending the, the MMA conference and that kind of thing, the small town administrators lunch, everybody wants to get David's opinion on things. So, you know, thank you so much for all your work here. Yeah, Indeed, we thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Andy. Well, thank, you. thank you all very much for your kind words. And it's always been a pleasure to work with you all in the town of Hadley is a great community. And, you know, if I have a weakness and I have several, but this main weakness is that I have a hard time working for something I don't believe in. I believe in the town of Hadley. I think that town of Hadley has so many things to offer for its residents, for its businesses, for its visitors. Uh, it's been great to work with uh, the town for 15 years and uh, I certainly uh, look forward to the next few months. Uh, I've met uh, with Carolyn Brennan. I think that uh, you're, you're gonna be in very good hands uh, and we'll work together to, in order to make the transition as seamless as possible. But thank you, it's been my honor to work for you all. Thank you. Any uh, further uh, comments before we move on? All right, well, we have a 545 Finance Committee appointment. Um, is everybody here or should we wait on that till 545? Well, if everybody's there, thank let's you. get going. Yeah, oh, there's Amy, okay. Yeah, let's, uh, so we have uh, finance committee here and uh, Dr. McKenzie's here from the schools, it looks like. So uh, let's go through the town meeting warrant. And David, do you just wanna go through all the items and are we voting on them at this time or what's, what do you think's the best way? Let me, let me uh, give like a, Big pictures, uh, medium picture, and then we can focus in on the warrant. The picture is that we're waiting for the state to pass a budget. They're on a continuing resolution until the end of October. Um, I'm hoping that they will pass a budget this month. Um, I think they're waiting to see what happens in Washington, D.C., but it's becoming increasingly clear that uh, D.C. is not going to be able to uh, help in a significant way that's going to uh, um, help us set the tax rate here in the town of Hadley. Um, just calling it low the way I, I see it. Um, so we have October 17th as the town meeting date. I'm hoping that we have a state budget or at least the broad contours of a state budget in place by then because if the state budget swings in local aid or local assessments, that is going to affect our ability to uh, set the tax rate. So I, I certainly don't want us to hold two town meetings to, uh, because the state is uh, uh, the timing of the state budget. But uh, so that's the big picture is that I may come to you and say that we need to adjust the date of the t special town meeting. Um, the medium picture is just the pace at which we need to work in order to uh, get everything ready for posting no later than October 2nd, uh, we're gonna have to ask the select board to sign the warrant on September 30th. And if you could schedule a meeting for just that one business item, that would be very helpful. Um, and so finance committee, 
um, we need to work in order to go through the 19 or so articles uh, and um, make sure that your recommendations are available to the public when we post the warrant. So I'm happy to work with you to make as much progress as, as we can. So that's kind of like the setting. Here's the, uh, the draft warrant. We have 16 articles. I know that there's at least uh, two more CPA requests coming in, so it's probably gonna be 19 articles in total. The first article is a prior year bill for FY 2020. Uh, it's $1,955, and this is due to a billing error by a vendor. A vendor sent a couple of invoices directly to what they thought was the accountant. It was an inactive uh, email. And by the time the uh, invoices came to us, it was way beyond the end of the fiscal uh, year. So this is just a vendor error that we definitely owe the money and uh, we'll take the money out of water reserves and sewer reserves. Article two would be the general fund budget adjustment. I'm hoping that we won't need this article. We may have to move money around in order to take into account costs that are becoming clearer, but I don't see any shortfalls in the budget. This will change if the state aid picture is significantly different from what we expected with the governor's uh, budget. Uh, article three is the enterprise uh, budget for FY21. Again, the same deal as I hope that we don't need this. I don't anticipate any major changes in the budget for the three enterprise funds. Uh, and that'll be clearer in the next week or so. Article four are fund balance transfers. This is a housekeeping article we do every single town meeting. We take unproductive money and we return it to its original uh, funding source. If it's a free cash article, the money goes back to free cash. If it was a capital stabilization or a borrowing, then the money goes back to capital station stabilization or the borrowing authorization is amended. Um, number five is new, and we need to do this. This is a revolving fund for the electronic permits. Uh, we have e-permitting for the building inspection department, and every permit that they issue is, uh, has a $10 surcharge, which we have to uh, provide to the software vendor. Uh, we don't have the uh, funding mechanism for that, so we're going to have to set up this revolving fund in mid uh, fiscal year to do so. Article six is to transfer money into both the capital stabilization and the uh, um, regular stabilization account with the eye towards needing, using that money in fiscal 2022 if, uh, if needed. I'm anticipating that we'll have somewhere in the neighborhood of 300,000 or more of free cash certified in September. And I expect that we can transfer the majority of that into the stabilization accounts. Article seven is something that uh, is proposed by the assessors, a modification of the exemption of taxes for qualifying seniors. Um, we uh, allow, qualifying seniors to defer their taxes indefinitely. Those taxes accrue 8% interest per year. And the assessors are suggesting that we reduce that interest rate from 8% per year down to four or 5%. I think Dan Zadonik is here and he might amplify on this. Uh, we took this to the, the finance management team there was a debate as to whether this was a good idea or not. On one hand, the deferred taxes have to be paid at some point and lowering the interest has no impact upon the qualifying senior, um, but it does impact the amount of money that the town gets eventually. Um, so it may not be in the best interest of the t greater number of taxpayers so that's on one hand of the debate. On the other hand of the debate is that if we lower the interest uh, for deferred taxes, then more seniors may qualify or may be interested in qualifying for this tax relief. So a divided opinion on the finance management team on this article. Um, 
Article 8 is the transfers to capital stabilization and general stabilization. So what the heck was I talking about with in Article 6? Let me go to the wording of 6. Oh, Article 6 was transfers of cash uh, between accounts where we, uh, we uh, had accounting errors in where that money went to. Uh, so I know that we owe $1,000 to the school department because we did not properly a, a code a grant which added to our uh, free cash. So our free cash bumped up by $31,000. We really owe that money back to the school. There's a couple of other adjustments that I'm working with the accountants in order to um, clarify. And uh, we, we, it's more of a housekeeping issue than anything else. Article nine is the capital budget for FY 2021 and the capital planning committee finished their work last night and has made a recommendation for the, uh, for the capital plan for the special town meeting. That's encapsulated in the minutes which I sent out this afternoon. Um, and we can go into the details on that. Uh, so article 10 is the CPA article and they're they're going to be making their final recommendations on September 21st. So we'll see what their recommendations are going to be. But they have at least two proposals, possibly three, possibly four. Uh, and we'll see what happens with that. Deadline for submissions of articles to the CPA is September 8th. Um, Article 11, this is new and different. This is a, a petition for special legislation in order to change the uh, elected Board of Health to an appointed Board of Health. Uh, Article 12 is reserved for the Planning Board. This is for their zoning definitions. This is something that they originally proposed for the annual town meeting and decided to defer to the uh, fall town meeting. And the same with the next article, 13, Planning Board res, uh, amend the zoning bylaws to allow for transfers into the Housing Trust Fund. This is a follow-up on the article that, zoning article, that, the general article that we passed at the annual town meeting. And again, this one was deferred from the spring. Uh, article 14, this is Megan's Way, again, deferred several times over the past couple of years. Uh, I'll try to make some progress on this. This is a perennial issue that just doesn't seem to want to get resolved. So we should uh, we'll work this out this uh, fall one way or the other. And then uh, the last town, uh, last select board meeting, we heard a presentation about the Green Communities Act. If we're going to participate in the Green Communities Act, we uh, need to pass two town meeting articles one for a planning board to uh, create zoning for by right uh, renewable energy production, research or manufacturing. And then uh, the final article 16, adoption of the stretch energy building code. Um, so those are the 16 articles plus the CPA articles that are coming up. Uh, how did the planning board meeting go last night? I know that they dis were going to discuss the um, green communities uh, issue. Is that something that they're going to move forward with? or It seemed like they did not take a vote officially. One thing did come up where we might already meet the qualifications for um, the law that would there's one stipulation in there, the as of right solar, we might not have to do that because we qualify in the manufacturing zone for the other two items in that, um, in that, that designation. So it's like manufacturing of solar where we have manufacturing already. So it's not a big add on. And then there's research and development of solar and we already have that in the industrial zone so we might be okay we might be able to omit section 16 or 15 is it the first one first uh warrant article and then the second kind of that stretch code it seems like 
no one is very strongly against that. So that seems like something that we can move forward with. Tommy's here. Um, do you want to build the code of, uh, you know, how big a deal is that compared to what we have now? It's actually not. Um, right now, in my opinion, it's, it's reversed. It's easier to do things without the, um, I mean, with the stretch code as opposed to um, with it, it flips flops every three years. Um, eventually it'll all be the same anyway. My question is, do we understand the impact of the stretch energy code on planned uh, municipal projects? I'm thinking of the Hopkins Academy renovation that we're uh, applying for, uh, and it's applying for the MSBA funding. Um, is yeah, this gonna significantly yeah. impact those costs? I think it only applies to new construction, but Tommy could answer it better than me. No, it does not. It could, it actually could have an impact. Um, but like I said, it's a, very soon it's going to be combined and, and, you know, they'll eliminate actually the stretch code and just have the um, IECC override it. I, uh, my assumption is they're waiting for, you know, every uh, community to join and that would happen. <clears throat> So the what I would ask for, um, Christian, maybe from the uh, um, your what is it, the Green Energy Committee, or um, I'm sorry, I forget the name of the committee. But if you guys could come up with what the impact would be on our fleet as far as vehicles, because I know that was of a con of concern as well about replacing vehicles sooner than we currently do and what kind of vehicles that we can buy. It sounded like it wasn't too big of a deal, but I know that may be a, um, a town meeting floor question is how much is it gonna cost, so. I know that, uh, you know, a lot of it, it might have only a in small impact if we have very small uh, DPW vehicles. It might affect the two town hall vehicles It'll actually help with police vehicles because I think with the program, we actually get money for buying hybrid cruisers and we're buying hybrid cruisers now. So there'll be some plus and minuses, but we can look into it. Okay. So anything from finance since you all are here? Um, any concerns, any major issues with what you see so far? I know this is probably the first time you've seen it, but. No big concerns. I, I would have a lot of questions. Um, I'd like to see more of what the green does incur and if we are going to cost us more money. So that is, but you, you, you answered that. So we'll just wait to hear on if that's going to cost us more money. Um, but it is, it is our first pass through with the warrant. So uh, we don't have any questions yet. <laughs> Does finance committee want to set up a schedule of meetings? I'll set up a couple, uh, get, uh, send around a message, send, get a couple options and I will uh, send you an email, David, um, if, and then you can post it for me. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other <laughs> discussion? Uh, Dr. McKenzie, do you have anything for the warrant or any information? Uh, no, I don't believe we have anything for the warrant. We took the capital request. Um, we're taking, we secured a grant in addition to using school choice funds. So thank you to the town for your willingness to do that. The school department really appreciates all the support we get from the town. And we're grateful that we secured grant funding. So as we'd said, if we were able to get other funds, we'd uh, take it off the capital request. So I don't think we have anything which means that Chief Mason will be representing the school department at special town meeting. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask a question regarding the Board of Health um, line in there, changing that from elected to appointed? Just Was that something that was requested by the Board of Health? Nope, that was something that I asked to be added to the uh, article, or to the warrant, I should say. And that goes along the lines with the uh, treasurer's office and the collector's office moving to a kind of a more professional, accountable system than the elected system we've used in the past. And I know that uh, David can probably talk a little bit more about that study that was done too. 
Yeah, so uh, David is referring to the uh, Mass uh, Department of Revenue review of the financial management structure of the town of Hadley that was done back in uh, 2017. And there are a number of recommendations made. Uh, they didn't specifically mention the Board of Health, but they did mention that moving from appointed, uh, from elected to appointed for key uh, departments uh, was uh, uh, preferred uh, in, in their world of uh, making sure that you have um, um, professional standards where you need them. Uh, not saying that the elected officials do not have the, uh, professional standards. I'm just reporting what the Department of Revenue said. I just would think that we'd want to maybe look at some other departments before we looked at Board of Health. And it seems like one of the problems at the Board of Health is just not having staff that's causing a lot of issues right now. So I don't quite understand this one, I guess. But I don't have to debate it all tonight. I just was wondering where it was coming from and why we picked the Board of Health and not other departments that we could definitely use um, appointed officials in as opposed to elected. Other departments do you have in mind? Because we could, uh, if it's doable this time around, then why not add it to the discussion? I mean, I think. So, oh, oh, go ahead. So, I, I missed a little bit of this. So, this is about board of health uh, people who are on the board of health being appointed as opposed to voted in. Correct. And who would be appointing them? It's a select board appointment after the current elected officials terms expire. So who's ever been elected would finish their terms just like with the treasurer and the collector's office. And then at that point they would turn into appointed. Got it. And yeah, I would think that, you know, and I'm not calling individuals out, but looking at departments, I would think possibly the town clerk's office that being appointed as opposed to elected and then possibly the board of assessors as well um, just because those are two key positions in town now um, that would rely on us having qualified individuals be elected for it and i think that can be a challenge well let's let's have that conversation it's not too late to uh add additional items on there and if that's something wow. we want to go ahead with then Let's I think we need to look at everybody who is elected rather than appointed. Um, planning board's an elected position, and that's critical that we have people that know what's going on when they run for that office. So we've got some time for that, uh, basically until September 30th, right, David? That's right. Okay. Any further discussion on the warrant? Yeah, back to that uh, solar thing. Um, the library wants solar. The senior center wants solar. We had spoken a few years back about Hopkins Academy roof being solar. I'd really be interested if though at least those three buildings were uh, would be like the first available. Uh, for the funding that would come from this green or grant money or a low interest loan rather than paying for it out of our pocket direct. Yeah, so there's two different things there. One is that the solar provision in the green communities is ground mount utility solar and it would have to be larger than 250 kilowatt. So it'd have to be one acre. And then... Um, or more and then also the grant funding that we would get from green communities is intended to reduce energy usage so we could put it into insulation um, heating systems that are more efficient those types of things but we couldn't put that money toward um, energy production like solar panels all right, so if there's, John, did you have anything more? No, that was it. I was just, okay. those, those are th three things that we were talking about in the past, so. Right. And they're big dollar items. Okay. 
Well, while uh, the finance committee is here, let's move on to the two issues that are involve hiring. Uh, first one is 6.1 pro proposed hire of custodian. And uh, let's see, the select board will review a proposal to cease using vendors for custodial work and establish a permanent employee position. The position would be responsible for the library, senior center, town hall, old library building, which is going to remain a good one, I believe, and the public safety complex. Uh, funding will need to be adjusted at the special town meeting. So uh, David, do you wanna introduce this or Jane, would you like to? I'd be happy to. Um, since, uh, well, it's been four years now, we've been talking about the new library and the new senior center. And all along we have known that these buildings are going to need to have more services than the couple of hours a week that we were having at the hooker school to maintain them in a fashion that we would be proud of with our town and not to have buildings deteriorate currently and i've i've given sent this out as a board doc for this meeting um for the month of july the town has spent nine thousand seventy dollars on cleaning expenses if you extrapolate that out and I had met with Deb about these numbers, that um, equals $108,000 a year. And that's a 30, it's incorrect in what I said, it's 35 hours, not 37 and a half hours. Um, that's equal to two positions that we could hire with full benefits and we'd have absolute control over them and twice as many hours cleaning and it wouldn't just be cleaning, it would be other maintenance duties that would be happening around town. Once in a while, you get a hole in a piece of sheetrock that needs to be fixed, or you need snow removal or outside maintenance of some kind. This wouldn't just be cleaning, it would be somebody who was capable of doing multiple jobs. The other thing about that number is this is July and the buildings have only been occupied by staff. There has been no public in these buildings. Once the public comes back because of COVID, we're really going to have to be careful about how we deal with our buildings. And I know we voted as a select board not to have any new positions, but it's a waste of money to go out to contract and pay more than we could do if we had somebody in house and we get better services. David? Yeah, so we currently have $68,000 budgeted for FY21 for the custodial uh, services and supplies. Um, so uh, I, I think what we need to do is we need to find out what uh, a vendor really costs I've circulated a uh, draft uh, uh, invitation for bids for cleaning services. I've asked for comments on that document. I haven't received any back yet, um, but I think we need to test the waters to find out what the vendor costs would be so that we have a better comparison as opposed to um, uh, the patchwork uh, approach that we've had for the past couple of years. Uh, with a couple of cleaning services and various uh, ways of putting it together. I'm also a little concerned about um, the message that we were very clear on with, uh, with uh, the budget that we had to pass for FY21, given the pandemic and the, the collapse of the local economy, that we had to say no to a lot of people for very reasonable requests mm -hmm. for expansion of hours, enhanced payment, new positions, um, I'm not, I'm not, uh, crazy about the idea of adding custodians, uh, in the context of knowing that we have other positions that we knowingly said no to, uh, because we needed to have everybody, uh, uh, tighten their, uh, financial belts as much as possible so that we could have a balanced budget in a very uncertain time. So, um. I would like uh, I would like to explore what the vendor costs are before we make a decision. Finance committee, before I say anything, you guys want to chime in on your thoughts? I uh, I would be very uh, not 
happy with adding any new positions. Um, I think that um, the, uh, the base rate, um, you're going to get someone that is not the highest skilled. Not, not, we're not going to be looking at a Gary Berg. Um, we're going to be looking at more of a custodian. Um, those are people with high turnover rates. You're going to be looking at rehiring, rehiring. Those are sometimes harder to keep. Um, I, I completely understand if we wanted to, uh, down the road, focus a little bit more on what uh, Gary's area is so that we could save costs down the road on doing, helping out with maintenance. But as far as just cleaning, I don't agree with hiring a custodian. Um, I just want to throw out there for an example of my own personal, uh, at every bank I've ever worked at, I, there has never been anybody that's been hired as a custodian. It's always, always, every place I've ever been is hired out. There's a reason for that. Um, it's, it's one of those jobs that it, it costs too much money. It's, it's more, it's better for the institution to sub out that particular job. So I would be very much in against hiring a custodian at this time. Joyce had something. You're muted. You're still muted. There you go. No. Joyce, you're muted. Just unmute. Am I unmuted? Now yeah, you're good. All right. Um, we also have a cleaning service in the building that I work in upstairs and downstairs, physical therapy and our office. And, you know, we're a large concern. They do have their own uh, environmental service at the hospital, but they're not the ones that come over and do these outside buildings that the uh, partners own. So um, I think it's worthwhile. I think when we first knew that these buildings were going to be built, that we had agreed at that point to look into doing a, uh, a service that would take care of all the buildings um, and see what it would cost us. So I'm in agreement with David to put it out there and see what we can get for, um, for our money and see how much it would cost right now. So my, I have two concerns. One is, uh, well, how we got here. When COVID first started and when we had to shut down Town Hall and we had a lot of our other issues, uh, we basically had no one to call on to clean. So we kind of went with the only available vendor that was there at the time, which granted was a little bit more expensive than what we were uh, expecting. Um, but we've been using them with uh, you know, decent success in the meantime. Uh, so I, I think we need to take a look at vendors first because we did basically promised the taxpayers that we weren't going to hire, we were going to keep a hiring freeze in place, which I believe was passed unanimously by the board. And so in my mind, until we've exhausted every other option, I don't think it's the right thing to do to just, you know, oh, we changed our mind. Now we can go ahead and hire two new people because, you know, it suits us for right now. Uh, I, I can see once we've exhausted the other options going down that road. Um, but, you know, financially, we've you know men's warehouse is gone we have several other decent sized businesses that are probably going to be closing up within the next month or so uh the financial picture is not getting any better for the town uh, as far as revenue goes so just something to keep in mind down the line i guess i would just say oh sorry i can let david go and um just i would be in favor of at least looking into hiring somebody i know with capital um, we were looking at $19,000 possibly to uh, work on the public safety complex and we're talking painting the walls, repairing um, holes that are in the sheetrock, um, cleaning up the bathrooms, repairing tile in the bathrooms. I think we do have a lot of work in town um, to do and maintain and we're adding, you know, now we have three new buildings. So even though a cleaning service, I could see that being cheaper for just town hall or maybe just the public safety complex. I feel like there is some kind of point in which we have so many buildings that a cleaning service is going to be more expensive than just having a person that is on call and can maintain all the buildings. So um, I guess I'm for just weighing both options and seeing what is the most cost effective 
because, um, you know, as Amy was saying, there is a staff turnover there, but I'd almost rather have somebody that's committed to the town being there instead of working with a outside company and continuously having new people in and out of our town buildings. So Christian, I agree with you. I think that uh, Gary Berg can't do it all. I know he's super busy with all of his requirements now, never mind with two new buildings, three new buildings coming online. So uh, I don't doubt there will be a need for somebody to assist him more of like a handyman type job than just a strict custodian. Um, I just, even, even if those numbers are spot on and we're paying $109,000 for janitorial at the moment, uh, I mean, you're not going to be able to hire two handymen or women, so to speak, um, for that amount of money with benefits. It's just not going to happen. No, no handyman is going to be making minimum wage and doing the kind of work that we're looking for. It's just, it's, it's not realistic, never mind the benefits. So I, I think we need to look at, do we really need sort of someone to do building maintenance or do we, are we looking more for cleaning initially or are we looking for one of each? Um, and just kind of get an actual scope of work and put it out there for a bit. If we can't get it, then sure, we'll look at hiring somebody. David, you had something. Um, this was an idea that uh, was suggested to me by, uh, by uh, um, somebody in town hall is, would, um, would some of this be able to be covered by a tax, senior tax work off program? I haven't thought through all the contradictions yet, but it's something to think about. Certainly something to look into. I, I would definitely think maybe the, the handy person aspect. I don't know about the cleaning aspect, but somebody that could paint, somebody that could repair walls, you know, for sure. There, there are some people that can clean better than I can that's out there, I'm sure, some days, you know, and that aren't working and that maybe would enjoy going into some of these buildings and doing what needs to get done, mopping the floor, vacuuming, you know, things of that nature. There might be people out there that want to do that, that have the energy. I'm sure there are people out there, but the senior tax work off has an income limit. So that really cuts down on how many people in Hadley would qualify for that position. Well, just another thought. Everybody's just kind of throwing their thoughts out there. So it's a good thing. I, I do have one more thought. Uh, yeah. How about the school? Um, since they're not as, uh, the jan their janitors, uh, the kids aren't going back right now. And is there um, any way that um, we can collaborate with them? Are they working on HVACs and that nature right now and getting things ready for possible back to school hybrid in October? I mean, that's the other thing that we're waiting to hear from the school. Uh, and if Annie, if you're still there, you want yes. to chime in? I am still here. So Jane had contacted me and asked me about available, uh, what the schedules were for the custodial and facility staff in the schools. I did explain that they're certainly, they're scheduled for all hours that they're working and while our Headcount, including the director, is one to uh, 0.5 in that building and 2.5. So I think it's five total across the entire district. So there isn't, there aren't a lot for two buildings and the volume, particularly right now. Some of those people are uh, less than, they're, they're less than full time. So certainly there were some hours and they were uh, interested and willing, they could work in another department in town um, and be compensated to work in another department. Uh, so that was your one question about availability. We don't have, we don't have a really large facilities uh, force and they are working really hard right now just to try to get everything ready for the start of school. And then Joyce, did you have another question about how school was starting or was it just the availability of-, of Well, their avail availability, but I was just saying that we're waiting until October to know whether or not we're gonna go hybrid, which would make them have to be available during the day for some of those students that would be coming in uh, on the hybrid end of it. So Correct. let me just clarify that. Yeah, actually, we have students who are eligible to come to school beginning September 14th. There will be okay. students in the building, just not 100% eligible population. So 100% mm -hmm. of staff reported last Thursday and mm -hmm. uh, students 
a good chunk of students are eligible to come in September 14th, and then uh -huh. the remaining students are eligible October 23rd, assuming that we don't have any significant spikes or issues around uh -huh. COVID-19. Okay. The custodial staff, so the custodial staff will certainly be quite busy, what you would think of as second shift, because every single day, all the spaces that students and teachers have been in will need to be disinfected every day before the students return the following day. So yeah. there, yeah, there, there are students, but there will be students here in September, Joyce. So there's oh, okay. Okay, great, great. Uh, is that a certain population, Anne, that's coming coming back in? Yeah, there's, so there's certain groups that were uh, determined to be eligible for in-person learning in the first six weeks. Um, and um, it's a it's a good chunk of the school population. Not all of those families are choosing to come to in-person learning. Okay, thank you. Paul had something as well. Yeah, I, I've used a, a service since I've owned these buildings over here. And one of the advantages is that when there is an absentee issue, they have other people who they can send over. And also when we've had some heavy load of uh, some type of uh, cleanup that needs to be done, you know, whether it's, you know, snow in the middle of the week or something that's tracked in, I can always call and they can send somebody over because they have a crew of people who are available. Um, you know, the absentee issue is a problem with a full-time employee. If they're out, where, who's going to do the cleaning? And you're committed to that. So with the services, they have a crew of people. You have backup service. You don't have to worry about filling that gap. Um, I, I just think that it's, especially now with all the special cleaning that's going to be done, setting up a contract with a company is the best way to go right now, especially with the uh, fact that we're not hiring other departments. That's my two cents on that. I just you. point out that, um, and I'm not arguing that they don't need them, but the school department has five custodians to maintain two buildings. And the town now is talking about two custodians to maintain five buildings and probably used overall in a week by as many people as are in the schools. Well, I mean, the schools, when the school's in session, have hundreds of kids, right. teachers, parents, uh, events going on on a daily basis. Yeah, maybe we have 100 people go through town hall in a week when it's open, but I mean, that. I, I get how the demand would be higher in the schools, but. Um, the library is gonna have a demand. The senior center has a demand. The people are gonna come, especially with our new beautiful buildings. I, I just think we should put it out to bid and see what we can get and then. I agree. I'm agreeing with that. And I think we should, if the bids don't offer us what we need and we need more than just cleaning, then we need to reconsider our position about no new hires. Yeah. Whatever absolutely. costs the town the, the least money for the okay. options that we're getting. Right. And so, somebody yeah. said something about minimum wage. This is a seventeen and a seventeen dollar an hour number that has been calculated here. Okay. This also right now is that hopefully with our we'll have warranties on these new buildings um, that we should be only looking at uh, cleaning. Um, that's going to be our main one, and especially if the buildings are going to start to be open, they're going to be need, need to be cleaned in a special way after daily use. So this isn't anything that's uh, one person I don't think can manage to clean each building a certain way on a daily basis um, if you're going to clean it COVID special right now because there's certain sprays and things that they use. We do it in the office every night in every single room i mean so if your building is going to start to get used then that's the kind of care that we're going to need to have to do and it's going to be routine cleaning plus covid cleaning so you got both that needs to be taken care of and that's a lot for uh, two people to do even on those two buildings if you're going to be on a daily use so um, again i think looking at a, a cleaning service is is the way to go right now uh, but again, let's get the numbers and see what they are. Jane, I know you've been working with uh, Chris Okafer. Can you, um, I guess, work on the detailed scope of work so we can add that to the um, IFB? So that way there's some more details on exactly what we need from the person so we can get it. I'd be happy to. I didn't realize that that was going out and that they were asking for comments on it. So I'm, I'm on it. So then... Uh, 
could I get a motion for from the select board to put out an I mean, I got a couple of questions. Once we have the uh, scope of work that Jane and Chris Okafer are working on completed to release. I'll make a motion to that. All right. David, I got a couple of questions. Can I get a second? First? A second. Thanks, Chris. All right, John, go ahead. Uh, question for Ann on the school committee. Um, have they uh, considered outside services for COVID if janitors can't handle the decontamination and the cleaning? Is Ann still there? You're right. muted. Yeah, I got it. I got it. That'll be, this, this is, I'll be so happy when Zoom meetings are over. I'm going to just say that. Um, Yes, so John, that's a great question. If we, uh, if we find out that it is not something that we need additional help, then we would certainly look to outsource that. But I will say that we did have students come in, granted they're very small, uh, usually one at a time during the summer, but that means after summer services, we'd go through the disinfecting protocols that we would have to do in the fall. The protocols don't change based on the number of people who've used the space, Public safety has been gracious enough to help us to get the exact same disinfectant that they use in the ambulances, as well as the aerosol sprayers that help us to get it on all of the services surfaces and it's dry in 10 minutes. So the number of children using the space wouldn't then correlate to having to spray more, right? You just spray all surfaces. Right. So this summer they had the opportunity to use the sprayers, get familiar with the disinfectant protocols and the product, and um, use it in Hadley Elementary School and also the bus that we used for transportation. So I am confident that will be that things will go smoothly in the fall. We had this dry run in the summer. They did great. If we encounter any problems, we'd certainly look for additional help, but I think we're in good shape based on what we saw this summer. All right, thanks. Um, sure. You know, I can I can see hiring one guy to help Gary. We've been talking about getting somebody to help Gary right along. But if you don't train these people to clean, the professionals pretty much got it down pat right now. And as the uh, finance committee just said, you know, they, they've got a crew and, and they've got a reliable crew all the time when you need them. If you get, put them on a payroll, you got vacation, workman's comp, uh, sick time when they're not oh, who's gonna clean you know uh-huh deb had something i think i was just gonna uh add that i i'd be happy to help work on the ifb as well and also you know what, what the the numbers that you get from the cleaning companies are going to be very helpful in informing your next fiscal 22 budget process um so the timing is really good for that I'm sure David and Carolyn and Jennifer would love your help on the IFB. <laughs> All right, so uh, any further discussion on the motion that's on the table? No. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so that passes unanimously. All right, so moving on to 6.2, COVID-19 update. Uh, the select board review the town of Hadley's response plans for dealing with COVID-19. The town is encouraged to advertise the public uh, benefits of flu vaccines in order to protect public health and to conserve resources. My understanding is that the senior center will be holding their usual flu clinic, correct, Jane? Yes, we're holding that September 23rd by appointment, people can't just walk in and that lets us not have crowds happening. All you have to do is call the center at 586-4023 and sign up for an appointment. Okay, perfect. And then we have the Board of Health proposes to establish a temporary position of COVID-19 public health outreach. The position is partially grant funded for 15 weeks. The remaining funds will come from the Board of Health budget. And Dr. Moser's here. So Dr. Moser, if you wanna to speak to this. Yeah, uh, well, the Board of Health is working hard to keep uh, everyone who lives here in Hadley as uh, safe and, and healthy as possible. Um, we uh, feel that in and of itself is important, and uh, it's also uh, a way to keep our businesses open and thriving. 
uh, the safer people feel coming to Hadley to shop and use our restaurants and patronize our businesses, uh, the better off we all are. Um, we uh, are very busy with uh, COVID management at the, uh, at the Board of Health. Uh, as you all know, we have no staffing. Uh, so uh, right now, um, I am uh, the person who uh, receives all the uh, email and uh, voicemail uh, complaints that come in, concerns from uh, residents of Hadley as well as residents of the nearby towns uh, concerned about violations that they see, uh, people or businesses not following uh, the COVID guidelines. And um, the Board of Health, uh, we would like some, uh, some help. And uh, what we're looking for is to uh, hire someone part-time uh, who would uh, basically be a, a COVID ambassador, uh, helping uh, educate people to the need for wearing their mask uh, and uh, observing people. Uh, if uh, there's an issue where there's a group of people and people aren't masked, they will have masks. They can educate people on the importance uh, of following the guidelines. Uh, this last weekend, uh, I received two calls uh, from concerned individuals. Uh, one was regarding uh, the Hadley bike path, uh, where they observed uh, large groups, multiple groups of people uh, on the bike path, uh, clustered together uh, without face coverings. Um, and this would be a real opportunity for uh, a COVID ambassador to uh, to educate people. You know, while we know that being out of doors mitigates the spread of COVID-19, being outdoors uh, is not a get out of jail free card. Uh, there, you can uh, transmit the virus outside. Um, there are, uh, you know, much the same uh, with uh, the other complaint was uh, regarding a, a crowd of uh, people outside of one of our uh, big box stores. So, um, you know, the idea is to have somebody out there talking to people. They can educate people uh, about the risks uh, that, of, of not wearing a mask to other people. You know, we know that covering our face is one thing that we can all do to help protect our fellow human beings. Um, and uh, I, I don't know what more reason we would need to have uh, to cause us each to want to cover our face to protect, to protect another person. Uh, so a COVID ambassador can be out there uh, spreading goodwill and science and facts and uh, encouraging people to uh, behave uh, in a way that shows respect uh, for everyone around them and follows the guidelines, the state guidelines, as well as our local uh, mask order. So um, I know that uh, the town of uh, Amherst is hiring 15 to 20 individuals to do this. Northampton is also uh, in the process of hiring multiple individuals. And uh, I think it would be uh, beneficial to all of us who live here, our businesses, our restaurants, as well as, you know, everyone here, uh, to have someone uh, perform this function. Dr. Mosler, I, it's <laughs> Joy. Um, I, have a, I have a couple of concerns. Uh, number one, I understand, uh, and I kind of feel sorry for you because you're getting all the brunt of all the uh, telephone calls and the questions. Uh, but my, my thing is that you do have two other board members, and where are they? Oh, Why they're busy. They're busy. They're, are they busy. Out? They are we're, busy. We're all busy. You know, uh, one of my colleagues is doing all of the permitting and the septic, and, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, what's, I don't know anything about all that stuff. You know, all the new stores yeah. and the businesses uh, and, you know, people's complaints about neighbors and noise and, you know, I, I'm not involved in that. And yeah. uh, my other colleague uh, is also involved uh, more so with the, uh, you know, we have uh, tracking and tracing, uh -huh. uh, keeping track of the number of cases here in Hadley. We yeah. have uh, multiple, you know, budget issues, administrative issues. I, I would say that 
collectively between the three of us, we are working close to 40 hours a week. Uh -huh. And uh, right now, uh, I calculate my salary to be about $1.25 an hour. And uh, that's slightly lower than my going rate. Yeah. So, uh, you I've know, been zero. I've been zero now for the last three years, so yeah, I yeah. certainly understand that. You know, I, I'm but, happy to do it. I feel like we're doing good work. We're, yeah. you know, promoting good health, and uh, again, trying to keep our town, you know, thriving is not an issue. We can't really do that right now, but at least to keep the businesses open and to keep them running. And again, you know, the safer that people feel, yeah, the more willing they are to come to Hadley to do their business and spend their money and, uh, you know, keep our taxes down. Um, did, your, did your board have a chance to uh, have a chat on um, the, I, I believe Mike's chief, Mike Spank and Abel offered, uh, and I know it's a different situation, but I know Dick Tessier uh, has offered to uh, be like a board of health uh, liaison between the fire department and uh, help and assist you uh, with doing some of these, uh, uh, being like the person out there to approach people about masks and things like that. Uh, he's a paid person from the fire department and has been offered by Mike to do some of these things. If, if that can serve a purpose for you and to help. Did you have a chance to speak with your other board members on that? Yeah, I think, um, I think Emma was looking into it, and I think, um, you know, that could be certainly in addition to this, uh, to this particular uh, position. You know, the more, uh, you know, we have out there uh, spreading the word and encouraging uh, healthful behaviors, uh, again, you know, it's, it's, it's going to work to benefit all of us. So, um, so this position would be totally paid for by this uh, grant. You know, I don't have this. It's by a grant, and also there that uh, have we apparently we have we do have funds in our in our budget that have not been spent, but it would come all from us. Okay. Yeah. Um, David, do you have, do you know what they have left in their budget, David? Uh, no, the grant will cover most of the costs, but they will have to use their operating budget, which they have money set aside for this purpose for. They have $3,000 set aside for this purpose. And that's so would that, be, would that be a 15-week um, yeah. hire? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, just a you know, this seems like a relatively important position for our town is to have somebody out there kind of advocating for these positions. I mean, are these these procedures, wearing a mask and that kind of thing? I mean, uh, you know, it's we're talking about a little over $10,000 a year to fund this position. Um, $3,000 is funded. I would say the biggest risk of this is that how do you find somebody that's just going to work from now until December 31st to do this kind of work? you know, can, do we have anything in free cash we could maybe allocate at town meeting to make up, you know, $3,000 or $7,000 that would fund the position for the year. I don't think we need that much to get through the whole thing, but it seems like trying to take some of this grant funding to fund the position and getting a little bit of extra money somehow to fund it through at least the end of this fiscal year would be beneficial to us. I'd like to see where it's going right now and just take it upon ourselves to okay this grant thing for the 15 weeks and then revisit it and see how it's worked in the last, in the next 15 weeks and see, uh, do, do you have anybody in mind that's willing to do this job, Susan? No, I, I don't, but um, I, I do know that uh, both Amherst and Northampton are, are getting a good number of uh, applications. There's a lot of, uh, uh, young people around who have finished their schooling, their college, and uh, they're home now because they they can't move ahead, in, you know, in their life the way that they had had thought, and they're they're mm -hmm. kind of uh, rebooting right now. And uh, you know, I think that's probably uh, somebody that would that would serve us well. Mm -hmm. well I don't mind. 
I don't mind doing it till the end of the year, but I still would like the Board of Health to think about um, letting Dick Tessier help you uh, in any way. And like I said, he's being paid through the fire department and they're offering his service to you. I think that's- Oh, wait, uh, wait, it's, it's coming back. Hold on, I'm old. It's coming back to me. Oh my God. We, we did discuss this. We thought it was a great idea, but I have to be honest with you. Uh, much as I have concerns about myself, because I am going frequently uh, to businesses, and you know, it's a health risk, because I'm over 60. I'm in a high-risk group. And uh, we were very concerned about having somebody, uh, you know, in other words, having someone take my place who, who's at equal, if not greater risk uh, of, of, of um, you know, being exposed to, to COVID-19. Um, yeah. As a physician, just personally, I, I don't think it's a good idea to have somebody over the age of 60 do this kind of a job. Now, what are you doing there? I don't have anybody else to do it. I'm serving the greater good. Well, the greater <laughs> good is the knowledge and the experience that Mr. Tessier has that has donated all his time to the town and in the past is willing to make a little bit of this easier on you, ma'am. Listen, if, if, he, if Dick wants to do it, we're, we are happy to have him do it. So uh, I, I have two issues with this. One is, again, a hiring freeze. We're going to be spending money out of the Board of Health operating money for, to fund a position that was not previously there. The second issue is Dick Tessier was offered to Board of Health over two months ago, I believe, almost probably almost three months ago, and nothing's happened. He's more than happy to do the work. He was doing the same work you're doing now when he was on Board of Health. And so he's familiar with the rules and regs. He's familiar with food inspections, everything, uh, you know. Under we're, we're, the, we're, putting out, we're putting out bids for, for the food inspection. You'll, you'd have to talk with my colleagues about that, David. But the Board of Health would like to professionalize food inspections. That's a whole nother issue here. Well, and what, what, we're, what we're talking about is the Board of Health having someone uh, part-time, 10 hours a week, to support us and to support our town in the good work of keeping our residents and our visitors to Hadley as safe and healthy as possible. David Nixon, how many hours a week does uh, is Dick Tessier on the payroll? Uh, I don't know that off the top of my head. I think it's, I think it's comparable, about 10 hours a week. So that's the issue I have. We already have a resource we're paying that's already paid for um, out of the fire department budget and he's been offered. So uh, I, I can't support spending on another position just to have somebody different. When somebody Can I just give you a little pushback? What, how does he have all this time to do board of health work, a 10 hour a week job? How much are we paying him at the fire department that he has all this spare time? to do stuff for the Board of Health. I mean, I would think the fire department is keeping him pretty busy, but maybe we're paying somebody to sit around for 10 hours and talk about working for the Board of Health? Oh, God, no. He's down there. He's uh, doing all kinds of work for them down there. Um, he's scanning. So then, so then he doesn't have 10. I, I, you know, I think we're, we're conf muddying the waters here, uh, particularly, uh, uh, in, in this issue with, uh, with Dick. I, I don't think, you know, this is not about one individual. This is about the Board of Health wanting to hire and train a COVID-19 ambassador to go out and talk with people and pass the message about safe practices. Yeah, is that a unanimous vote of your whole board? What's that? Is that a unanimous vote from your whole yes. board? Yes, yes. I don't believe so because I talked to another member that says the chairman and you are leaving him out of a lot of the issues that are facing the town of Hadley. Right no, we, we're, we're, we meet every week and uh, we work by consensus and we've been in agreement uh, on every, you know, we've come to agreement on everything that we've discussed. And we're in agreement on this. 
and you can certainly, uh, you know, speak to Greg and ask him. I already have. I'd, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we decline this hire and uh, hope that the Board of Health will make the choice to use resources we already have, such as Dick or um, other employees that could do the same work. We, we don't have other employees that can do the same work, David. I'd like, I'd like to amend that just, um, David, they have the grant money that is, is there. Uh, I'd like to just make a motion to hire a person for the 15 weeks using the grant money um, to finish out uh, and seeing where we go with COVID. 15 weeks is a good chunk of time to know uh, what's happening with COVID and go from there. I think using the grant money would be okay but not actually uh, doing any town benefits of anything of that nature. Does that come with the grant, Amy? So I have a, an issue with, um, it's one thing with the grant, but another thing, even the taking the $3,000 out of uh, the Board of Health. Next year is gonna be a really tough year. We're getting, it's getting worse and worse. And it's gonna, we're looking at this is gonna be a real tough year. So I'm saying even $3,000, it might not be a lot, but if they don't use it, where's it gonna go? It's gonna go to free cash and we need that money. I don't think hiring one other person, especially when we have someone else that is willing and able, these departments are working together. That's the thing, we need to bond together, work as a team. And if one department is not using it to the fullest capacity, we should try to take from that department to use it in another department. We should work together in different departments. Not, um, I don't feel like hiring is, is just going, and, and even though a grant comes, what happens is many times you hire someone with a grant and then they stay on. You always keep them going. It's just gonna add more and more year after year. And I think this is gonna cost the town money. And I think that if we, you stuck just to no hiring at this time, it would be a better uh, situation. But like I said, it's not just grant money. They're pulling other town money. And yes, it might be their budget, but it wouldn't, if they don't use it, and their budget was supposed to be so tight that we couldn't take any more money out of there. When we tried to slim everybody's budget, there was no money in their budget. So all of a sudden now, if they have extra money, well, maybe we shouldn't spend every single penny that we have. If we don't need to, it should go back to free cash because we're going to need that free cash. Um, they may be able to get volunteers. I'm going to say uh, second David's uh, motion. All right. Any further discussion on my motion? Jane, you're very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All right. So if there's no uh, Jennifer, has something. I just I just want to make sure that I'm understanding the motion. Joyce pulled her amendment then, or the amendment is staying on? It pulled it. I, thank I second you. David, I, sec, I second David's motion. Okay, thank you. I'm trying to make you work for your minutes. I'm on it. I got my little pin. I'm here. Deb had, had her hand up. Just um, my understanding from speaking with uh, Emma Dragon was that this was going to be 100% grant funded from the CARES Act. Uh, that's not what we have on the agenda item. It says partially funded with the remaining coming out of the board yeah. budget. They didn't have enough uh, CARES Act money for, to cover it. So they do have $3,000 for a similar position in the, in the operating budget. Okay. To make up the difference. All those in favor of my motion. Aye. 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 And is that no. all right? Four one, just to be correct. Christian was the no, so that way it's perfect for the minutes. All right. Um, moving on, uh, legal representation RFP results six point three on the agenda item. So we put this out for bid. Um, the, the reason that we did this is we weren't very happy with the aggressiveness of the law firm um, fighting some of our litigation and uh, 
union negotiations, things like that. Um, but after some conversation with Jane, she, she had a good idea that um, maybe we should stay with what we have for another year since we're switching town administrators. We have a lot of, um, a lot of things going on right now. Um, so I did ask David if he could have a conversation with KP Law and explain to them that, um, you know, I personally have not been very happy with their performance at town meeting the last few years. Um, they're kind of just there and they didn't really have a lot of answers and they couldn't really speak to a lot of subjects that we needed them for. And I wasn't really happy with their um, aggressiveness when it comes to litigation. So David, did you have a chance to talk to them and explain what our expectations were going forward if we kept them on? Uh, yes, I did. I talked to David Jenkins, I expressed that uh, the board of selectmen are concerned about uh, some of the, the the length of time that it's taken to, to do routine matters, the uh, lack of progress on some of our uh, litigation, uh, and um, and uh, I said that uh, the, the board was uh, looking for uh, improved performance. Did you talk about changing it to a one-year trial contract as opposed to three? I didn't have that information for the uh, from the select board, so I'm waiting to hear what the select board says tonight. So I would make the motion that we stay with KP Law for a one-year contract and see if they can improve in areas we have been concerned about. I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? Um, were they were they low bid anyway again? what I saw they were yeah there there was um, two other firms correct David that bid yeah there was two other ones I read it but I just don't remember the figures off the top of my head right now what one of them was significantly more expensive I know that but um, so yeah, it, I don't know, it sounds like a good idea just with all the ter all the changes that we're having with uh, with Carolyn coming on board and you know maybe it's good to stick with what we know for now I think I remember that one had an initial fee and then by the hour it was a little bit higher. Okay, motion. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that one's unanimous. And th this will be for a one year contract? E yep. Yes. Okay. That was the motion that Jane had made. Yes. Correct. All right. David, you're saying no. David Nixon, you're saying no. I'm not saying no. It's a one-year contract. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, let's skip down to the poll hearing for North Maple Street. I'm not sure if anybody is here. No, it doesn't look like it from Verizon. We can't. You can't do that until 7:15. I'm sorry for interrupting, but that's a, a that it was posted for 7:15 for the uh, notifications. Okay, good enough. Uh, let's skip down to 7.1, old business, library, fire station, and senior center updates. Uh, who wants to go first? Senior center. All right, go ahead. We were happy to host uh, elections yesterday, and we're really pleased with the town's uh, reception of the new building that they have bought. Great. Yep. Handle the flow of people without a problem, Jane. Jennifer ha and Mike had it set up, or Jessica, I'm sorry, and Mike had it set up really well, and there was never an issue. Good. Yeah, when I went through, there was nobody there anyway. But. How many people voted yesterday in person? I don't know that number, but I would say probably three or 400 yeah, at least. Yeah. The count on the machine when I was going through was like 1800, but it's a new machine. So I don't know how the numbers reflect the actual number of voters because that seemed incredibly high to me. So they, they could they could have put in on that new machine, uh, Christian, they put in the uh, ballots, um, no. the absentee ballots and the, and the write in ballots. Those are put in there also. So maybe that's possible. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's a good new polling location. It went pretty smoothly. 
Yeah, looks great. Did uh, Buildwire, did you have something or was that a accidental unmute? It wasn't even an accidental unmute. Uh, I don't know what happened. That's okay, no problem. All right, so moving on to the library. Christian, do you have anything from the library? Yeah, the library's moving ahead. Uh, we're having some uh, issues with the roadways, uh, just with the width and the fire truck as they were, as, they, as the roads have been built. Um, so it requires some rework. It sounds like there's a solution there, um, but it's still a little to be determined how we're gonna work out paying for those changes and that kind of thing. So there'll be some conversation coming up about that. And I don't know, if, I know Tommy has been involved with the, the building and with some of the sidewalks and the roadway. I don't know if you have any comments you wanna make, but that's kind of the big issue right now. Yes, we've, um, myself, um, DPW, Chris, and um, Chief Spankenable have been out there. And Mike can actually, as Chief can, let some things go, but there's quite a few issues with the with the fire lane. So we have some drawings that are being worked up. We, we were on the planning board meeting last night, and they would like to see the uh, percentage of green, even though life safety is more important, but they just want the calculations. So at the meeting today, we had asked for that, and um, who's paying for it? Who's, you know, how did this all happen, and, and how we can, um, what it's going to come up. Chris was very good about you know, want something in writing to present. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get anything today. The meeting was at 12.30. So um, we'll have to hit, ask them to postpone the blacktop again, I, I guess, for, you know, a week or two. And yeah, I got an email just on the green space. It went from 27.6% down to 27.1. So half a percent, but it's still above the minimum. Yes. And, uh, Bill Dwyer is here, and it sounded like from the planning board there was some desire to have an engineer review the plan before moving forward with uh, or going back and having a planning board vote on the site plan amendment. Is that what I'm gathering? We were we were covering a lot of ground um, <clears throat> because we had had so many unknowns going into this, so. Um, yeah, we would like to have someone sign off on it at some point. Um, usually there will be an engineer stamp on a plan. There wasn't a, on the one that came in last night. Um, I'm not sure we need to go to peer review, but we would like to like to have some assurance that this is the, the end of the road and the last change. Okay. The planning was really put on the spot yesterday. There was, and we also asked for the, you know, to have a stamp plan. And I guess um, you've already gotten the green space, which is great if it's over the 20%. But um, they were nice enough to, you know, listen to us and take that at the last minute last night. So, which is going to be very helpful. Tommy, was those two north uh, exits addressed with the handicapped issue? Yes. Yes, and, and by doing what Chris had suggested with the uh, north exit would be to actually, you know, widen that to get it close to the 20 feet, we would be able to um, grade wise the elevation, stop that sidewalk, you know, come off at that point as opposed to going all the way to the um, town, you know, front sidewalk. So maintenance, we're probably saving 60 feet. Um, of shoveling or clearing sidewalk if, if this would work what we're proposing or what they're proposing. Yeah. And I noticed the lights are way into the tree line there. Uh, was there any discussion about uh, getting rid of those, that tree line or, or the agreement with the neighbor for privacy? Have, has any uh, of this been through the library committee and have they addressed any of these issues? Or I don't know about that. Or the, uh, Christian. The lighting issues. I'm sorry. I guess I don't know what you're talking about, John. So I don't. I'm. The it might are in be. The middle of the trees right now mm -hmm. on the property line where the herbivites are on the north side of the building. Nobody took into consideration snow removal. When a loader goes through there, or a big truck, they're going to rip the mirrors and break the windows on the equipment, plowing snow in there. 
those arborvitaes really need to be removed and the stumps taken out and a new row of arborvitaes put in if they need to have some sort of privacy put up with Mr. Vakula. Take a walk over there and take a look at the lights. You can't tell the lights from the trees over there on the north side of the driveway. They're all up right now. I just drove through at three o'clock when I got out of work. Okay. All right, so from the, I guess we'll let the library building committee work through the issue with, uh, with, with Tommy and uh, Chief Bank Nabel and see what they come up with and then uh, Bill, when's your next planning board meeting? Two weeks from now? Correct. Two weeks. Okay. So then we, we really need to have something for the planning board ready in two weeks, uh, ready to go. Uh, one more question for Tom. Uh, those two X's means they're going to remove those two uh, parking pushouts there where the curbs are in the back on the uh, east side? Yes, that's it. one of them completely. You know, put the curb, the granite, and you know, right next to the um, sidewalk, and then the other one is going to be reduced to get the, you know, the radius for the truck to pull around there, and it would be painted as opposed to the, you know, green space, the island, yeah, that, that the peninsula. Makes that makes sense. All right, and uh, anything further in the library? No. Yeah. Right. Nothing else for me here. Thanks, Christian. Uh, Joyce, uh, fire station. Fire station. Uh, we just got to touch up that lawn there. We got, oh, master has got to get back up there and fix that. Um, in the next two weeks, uh, engine number two is going to be taken out of service. Uh, they're going to they're starting to clean out the North Hadley fire station. Um, they took down the, the North Hadley fire station sign, and they're cleaning that up, and that's going to be mounted at the new Northampton nor, new North Hadley Fire Station, and they're cleaning that up. Uh, one of the things we wanted to know about is uh, getting that bell out of the belfry uh, and somehow getting it up to the other North Hadley, uh, making some use of it up there, but we, we really feel like we want to take it out of the old North Hadley Firehouse there. There's a bell up there. Anybody got thoughts on that? David Nixon, was that, is that okay with the sale of the property? Um, gosh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I suppose we should check in with Spire to find out if they really wanted the bell or not. Well, wasn't it wasn't going with the building, so even if I was going to burn the building down, that bell was coming out. <laughs> but if we showed the build, if we showed the building, and it, it was part of the part that the buyer saw then it's attached to the building and technically we have to give it to them if they don't, if they want it. Where is the status of that transaction at the moment? Right now the lawyers are reviewing the um, preservation restriction and as soon as they can agree uh, on the terms, then uh, we should be seeing some action on the closure. Has the state Was there cash involved? They've, they've paid a deposit um and uh they owe us the, the the remainder and what would that be uh the total price is seventy thousand dollars the deposit was twenty five hundred has the state historical commission whatever they are uh signed off on the historical restrictions they uh, they'll they'll receive it once the lawyers agree upon the terms of the preservation restriction okay and then uh, in the meantime, can let's check on the bell with the buyer. And then uh, Joyce, do we want to have Gary or somebody from DPW to go over there and see what's involved to get that out of there? Or what we, do you would, we would like to. We had assumed because it was part of the fire station that that would be uh, one of the things that would go to the uh, new fire station. Uh, it's part of the, their equipment, actually. Um, and they are going to be taking other stuff out of the where the fire station was. Some of it may be going to auction, um, so they'll determine which part of those uh, things left in there would go. Um, so, I mean, the things that we own are, are what we own. Uh, we figure we'd own the bell because it was part of the fire department. So, 
uh, you can work work that out with the buyer and see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that um, he would be okay with that, and I, I would think so. I just don't want to screw up the sale by just you know assuming or springing it on him at the last minute. That's all. So, mm -hmm. um, so we'll check into that, and then um, anything else on the fire station? No, um, those are the only things. Everything is doing good. We have not set an op opening house yet um, with all this going on. We're all just kind of waiting to where we can all do our open house, maybe have a day where we go from one to the other and have the uh, executives of the state come out and just do a one, one shot deal. That would be nice. Okay. All right. So we still have 15 minutes for this poll hearing. So we'll keep moving down the line here. Um, 7.2 cable franchise renewal committee and cable oversight committee. Um, these are two separate and distinct committees. And um, the important one in my mind, or the uh, very critical long-term one, would be the Cable Franchise Renewal Committee. And something that um, I, you know, I ask that we get a start on a little bit early, uh, although the contract runs through 2024, if I'm correct, um, you know, the negotiations can take some time. So what we're asking for tonight is letters of interest to be submitted to info at hadleyma.org if you're interested in serving on that committee or the Hadley Media Oversight Committee uh, to review ongoing issues and projects that involve Hadley Media. So those are two separate um, committees. So please specify which committee you're interested in serving on and get those to Jennifer and we'll go ahead and make a, a appointments for the next select board meeting, which I believe is the 15th or 16th. So, uh, Drew, go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit confused. I wasn't under the impression that we were looking at creating two new committees, um, though, I mean, sure. Um, but I thought that what was of uh, most importance was creating a new cable advisory committee in order to uh, start the renegotiations of the contract with Charter Spectrum. Um, and specifically to conduct the ascertainment survey. So I've, I've reached out to some Hadley residents and asked them to send letters of interest to join the cable advisory committee, but that's not what you're calling this particular committee. So I just wanna clarify that. So I can call them up and say, hey, send your letter and make sure that you're saying that it's this particular committee that you wanna be on. Yeah, so, David, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, there's two separate, uh, very distinct titles of the two committees. One is involving the negotiation of the contract. The other is uh, strictly the Hadley Media Oversight Committee. Is that right, David? That's right. And, I, you know, if somebody wants to serve on both committees, I don't see why that wouldn't work as well. Okay. So, so, what, are we, so what are we calling the, the, the committee that is conducting the ascertainment survey because to, to my mind that is what we really need to get started on right now right that's so that's the cable franchise renewal committee okay cable franchise renewal committee okay and then the other one is the hadley media oversight committee which is uh currently there there are no members on that committee so we're uh, what does the board think uh probably five members on the hadley media oversight committee and do you think we should bump it up a little bit for the franchise renewal? I think five is a good number. And certainly if they want to serve on the other one, that's okay too. Right. I think five conscientious people is, is a good number. If you start getting more, I think it just, it's confusing. Yeah, yeah right. I agree. Okay, right, John. No, I agree with Jane. Uh, so five is a good number. We've been working out pretty well with fire in the past few years, so and I'm, three is kind of pushing it for for time for everybody to spend a little time on whatever they need to do, you know. And I'd like to throw, throw my hat in the ring for the uh, franchise renewal committee. I mean, awesome. Next week, so super. All right, so that's that's that. Send your letters into Jennifer, please, and uh, we'll make the appointments next week. Uh, 7.3, the Route 9 widening project, uh, town property land takings. We don't have anybody from Mass DOT here, unfortunately, this week. So unless uh, Amy has any updates that she wanted to provide while she's still here, we'll pass over this for tonight and take it up next meeting. 
be right. I, I don't have any updates. Um, I sent everyone the map that tried to make it a little bit clear on what we talked about before. I, I it said I always said five lanes, but when I actually looked at it before I sent it out, it was six lanes. It's two bike lanes. I thought there was only one. So there's actually, if you count both bike lanes, it is six lanes. So that small little road is going from uh, just three lanes right now to six lanes and two sidewalks. So the green is going away. Um, the uh, only other thing I wanted to let everyone know is uh, uh, thank you for, you know, um, really listening to some of this. And also, I besides for other um, other people on Route 9, I know as far as the bank goes, because it's going to affect the bank quite a bit, um, the, uh, I had the president come down. The president's getting the attorney, his, uh, the bank's attorneys involved now. So they will be arguing this. So um, they were very pleased. I told them that so far the town's been wonderful, has given all kinds of support. So um, I just wanted everyone to know where the bank was on this. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Amy, I, I looked at that uh, thing you just sent us. It, on the north side, they have the uh, right turn lane and the straight lane all in one, similar to what you have right now. Um, the left turn lane, they'll have a separate lane for. So what they could really do is take one lane out to narrow it up a little bit. I, I would be for that. I don't know if you looked at it, David, or not, but uh, David Phil. Uh, yeah. Once I looked at what Amy sent us, I haven't had a chance to look at the DPW one, but hopefully it's on there this time. The can we, can we, have the three can, can we take a week to look at this and then before DLT might come at our next meeting, have another conversation about it? David, David did they bring a 100% to the town hall, David Nixon? Yes, I was just about to say that in your uh, board office, there is the 100% complete plans for the Route 9 project. Uh, it's about three inches thick. The, uh, the diagram showing the, uh, the, the bank intersection is on sheet number 136. Um, and uh, I encourage people to come in and take a look at it. Uh, there's a lot of changes. Uh, to a lot of businesses along Route 9, and uh, I think that um, um, it would be uh, important for the select board to understand the full scope of the of the, the project here. Yeah, and maybe we can let the Amherst Chamber of Commerce know, since a lot of our businesses are a part of that. Yep, will do. I, I, the only other thing I wanted to point out is is and it has to do with in front of the library and it has to do in front of everyone. They're taking away a lot of the green and putting cement and putting, uh, besides for the roadway, all the cement and these uh, bus stops. Uh, it's not, it doesn't fit in with historical. It's there should be question about drainage prob problems possibly because they're replacing a lot of grass with a lot of cement sidewalks um, and blacktop. So, um, I, I'm really, besides for the nine, I, I really would like, you know, when they do come a bunch of discussion about, you know, having a different type of bus stop um, without having those um, huts or whatever you want to call it, um, like they do at the other end. We don't want to have it at the village end. We should have it um, somewhat different, I think. Okay. Thanks. So, okay. Yeah, I, I thought originally... Uh, East Street was the part of the center of town uh, historic overlay, and you know I, I would really consider up to East Street even a little further part of the center of town, and we need to address that with the state. All right, well we'll try to get them here in person for one of these meetings someday. I'm sure they'll show up. Um, so in the meantime, we'll move on. Thank you, Amy, and. Um, Let's go real quick uh, to department liaison reports. Um, if each person can just go and talk about something that your department is doing, give a little update, because uh, this was an idea that Jane had, which I appreciate that uh, 
keep the public informed about what's going on in our departments since they don't have the same opportunity to uh, you know see what's going on in the departments for which we are liaisons so jane you want to start first be happy to i'll talk about the cultural commission who um just announced to me the other day that they have been given permission to extend their grants to be used because of COVID. So any artist who has received money does not have to use it by the end of the year, which is, I think, quite reasonable. Um, and also that they have their haiku signs up along the, the uh, dike for people to see as they're walking up there. All right. I'll go ahead with uh, DPW. So although John could probably talk about these just as well as I can, but uh, DPW has been doing mowing and brush, brush hogging. Uh, I think that's what it's called along the sides of the roads, River Drive. You'll see that's starting to get cleaned up and around the guardrails and things like that for the year. I think we do that one more time uh, before the winter. Is that right, John? One more time before the year ends as a final cleanup? Yeah, I think they just started again right now. Okay. Uh, we've had a couple major storms and some major tree damage as everybody's well aware with their power being out for quite a while. So that's taken up a lot of time, extra time uh, with the limited manpower we have. So. And so they've been uh, interviewing for both mechanic positions and um, the two, is it, I think it's two open labor positions down there. So hopefully in the next uh, week or so we'll have some higher announcements for that. So that's all I have for DPW. John, what do you, you have anything? Oh, sounds good. Is Chris still here? Nope. Uh, he's gone. Joyce, do you want to talk about anything, police or fire or anything? Sure. Well, as you know, over the past couple of months, I think the uh, police uh, have had, uh, you know, a little bit of stress on their plate, um, especially with the reform bills coming out and things of that nature. But um, all of our police officers and, and our chief and lieutenants and Sergeants, everybody is so very pleased to be working in Hadley and uh, being a part of Hadley um, that that helps to relieve some of the stress that has been um, given to them over the past few months. Uh, we are down an officer and a civilian right now, um, but se things seem to be going along, uh, not needing uh, to, to refill those positions right at this point since uh, we're not filling positions, so they're doing what they can with what they have. Um, but they're, they're, like I said, their they're morale and their spirits are good because they're working in Hadley and they're happy uh, being here, even though there's other things um, surrounding police departments throughout our, our country. So um, that's a good thing. Um, our fire department is uh, helping to pitch in. Um, uh, helping to fill some of the time that Mike has been out. Um, everybody has just pitched in great. Um, Mike's back doing uh, all kinds of stuff in the office and I've given him some warning to stay off that leg uh, as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, he, things are moving there. They're still trying, like I said, they're working on uh, getting the North Hadley fire station cleaned out and that's on their list too, besides doing everything else they do. Um, one of the things I did miss in saying, and Dick Tessier, he, uh, he has been doing data entry. He's been going with them on inspections. Um, even in his quiet time, he doesn't like being idle, so he's out mowing the lawn there. So they're trying to keep, that, uh, keep the place looking good. So um, thanks to all of them and everybody, and everybody just needs to stay safe. So those are my two. All right. Christian, do you have anything from yours? Well, the library, you know, we talked about that. They're in the process, you know, still kind of doing the um, curbside pickup of books, uh, but also getting ready to move. Uh, let's see, climate change committee is working on, we talked about that, kind of the, the big thing is the green communities. Um, Diversity, equity, and inclusion committee will be meeting, um, uh, I think it's next week or the week after. Uh, and then looks like some new air purifiers are at town hall. Uh, so getting that ready for um, people coming somewhat back to work 
and I think we have a department head meeting next week. So learn more then. Okay. Probably David's uh, uh, town administrator update would give more information than what I have right here. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. Uh, we got about a minute until we can do the poll hearing, so let's do this last. Could minute. I do? Could I do my uh, condolences? Oh sure. Um, so tonight I have two condolences of two very special people. Um, the first one is Ray Russell, senior from North Hadley. Uh, Ray was a sportsman, loved fishing, hunting, uh, took his son and the grandchildren up to a camp in New Hampshire. Um, just was a good all around guy. His wife, Ann's a great person. I was in mother's club with her. So condolences to, to his family, um, from the select board. And then with sadness, I have, uh, Mary Fitzgibbons. Um, Mary was very special to the town of Hadley. She was our town accountant for a number of years, married to Joe and a number of children. She uh, was ever so present in our town and she was a, a wonderful person. Her maiden name was Divine. So she was a local Hadley resident also as, as Ray was. Um, so condolences to Mary's family, Joe and the children and everybody, grandchildren. All right. And then uh, let's take care of the Castro boundary line agreement. Uh, this is involving the reservoir area. Uh, they surveyed the land there that is going under the conservation restriction. And they basically found us an extra 34 acres, I believe it is, that uh, uh, Skinner State Park or DCR, I guess it's DCR, had uh, erroneously believed belonged to them after all these years since, um, was it 1980 at least? 1981 it looks like. So we found an extra 34 lake, uh, acres of Hadley land. Wow, <laughs> nice. So uh, this boundary line agreement is just adjusting what land belongs to Hadley and what, bland, what land belongs to DCR. So if I could get a motion to approve that. So moved. All right, and uh, actually let me amend that. A motion to approve this and allow me to sign on behalf of the select board when this is ready from the attorneys. So moved. And second. Okay, any further discussion on that? Nope, all those in favor? Aye. 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 John voted yes on the a reservoir. Yes, I hold my perfect record. <laughs> 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 All right, so you that's just the acreage. Joyce, <laughs> you broke me. Oh, no. No, you just, uh, <laughs> I think you fell asleep there for a minute. And you woke up and said, aye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's uh, 717 is what I show. Um, we have the poll hearing, and let me pull that up here. Verizon poll hearing on North Maple Street. And this is a request for job 1A4GN38, North Maple Street. Abutters have been notified. This is for a new poll on a new construction home, correct, Jennifer? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And is, Ver is Verizon on? It, it doesn't look like either Eversource or Verizon chose to join us this evening. Okay, so we can so, vote on it without them? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I told David that uh, because of the lack of cooperation from Eversource in getting the street lights put up by Russell School outside of Town Hall, um, that we've approved back in January, they have still refused to assist us or help with getting those put up, that we weren't going to approve any polls uh, that they requested. But since this is a resident building a new home and can't get power to their home, um, I, I think this is a, a good reason to make an exception and get them power to their new house. So I just want to be clear, we're, we're still not going to allow for, um, Eversource to throw up new polls until they help us out as a town happy. So. But if I could get a motion to approve this poll hearing. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, Thank so you. Last, see Aye. That?
Okay, so all five unanimous, yes. Um, last thing is, David, do you have anything from your administrator update that you'd like to cover that we didn't hit? Uh, we've covered most of the uh, information on the administrator's report. Uh, the, there are a couple of things. We, unfortunately, we, uh, we, we did apply for the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant. It was a $300,000 uh, application for mainly to um, keep on our program of clearing out the dish, uh, ditches and as well as looking at our culverts. Unfortunately, we were not funded in this round. So we'll contact uh, the MVP program, find out what, they, uh, what suggestions they have, and then apply again for next year. Um, the other thing is that the Greenfield Anaerobic Digester uh, project has been put on hold indefinitely by the city of Greenfield. So we need to uh, rethink our strategy for uh, long-term solutions for our sludge hauling issues for the wastewater treatment plant. And I know that we have a meeting with the town of Amherst uh, tomorrow to explore some options there. Um, I should be getting July revenues and I can report on those when they come available. Uh, September 8th is the deadline for Community Preservation Act proposals and those go to Amy Feiden. Uh, we need to remember to uh, save the date September 30th. The select board signs and posts a special town meeting warrant that will just be a one item meeting. October 8th is the public forum on the special town meeting. Uh, we have early voting for the national election in town hall from October 17th to the 30th. And October 17th, we have the special town meeting. And don't forget to vote for the, in the national election on November 3rd. Um, for the public forum, are we gonna do that over Zoom like we did last time? That seemed to work okay. Is that uh, okay with everybody? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That right. sounds good. I think that's probably the best option for us. Okay, so we'll just plan on doing that over Zoom on the 8th. And then um, I think that's, oh, okay, announcements. That's all I have left. I do have one other thing. Um, yeah. That has to do with uh, the parking lot at the library and the senior center and whether the select board will permit um, no overnight parking signs to be put up there or no overnight parking except with permission signs to be put up there to keep it from being used um, by people we might not want gathering there. Yep, I agree. I had, I had driven through there and I had asked Mike Mason to um, have the police run through there in the morning just to see what vehicles are parked there. Um, since there are houses on Route 9 housing students, didn't want them to feel that they could be using the senior center parking lot for their parties or their parking or whatever, o their overflow parking. So um, I agree with Jane, there should be some type of signage up there. David Nixon, um, we have Ernie's Towing that does the reservoir. Uh, can we ask them to enforce this once the signs are up as well? Uh, certainly, I'll work with the police in order to do that. Okay. So if I could get a motion on the signs, please. I so move we'll that we have no overnight parking except by permission signs put up in the library and senior center lot. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, de depending if the Legion reopens, there may be a, a car set there at some point. If somebody gets a ride home, you know, something like that. Oh, that's, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I think they have prior permission. That was the, the agreement that we struck with the Legion for the, uh, their use of the uh, uh, senior center over uh, parking lot. So correct. They, they already have the permission to do something like that. And we certainly okay. encourage them to park overnight and get a ride home if necessary. Yes, we do. Exactly. All right. 
So uh, the only announcements I have is uh, two things. One is Chicken to Go on the 20th. Uh, I believe the Senior Center has tickets available at their front desk or will tomorrow. I am all I was hoping. <laughs> Um, but if you can call the senior center and I'm sure they can uh, hook you up. The other one I have is, um, obviously it's a difficult time for businesses. So, um, I've lost a few long time businesses in town and I've heard that there's more on the way out, unfortunately, because of the, you know, economy due to COVID. Um, I spoke with David and Jennifer about having some sort of, uh, forum for business owners in town uh, with various department heads and uh, so just stay tuned to that and basically we're looking for suggestions what the town can do to help these businesses survive so if it, if, if you know cutting a, a permit fee or a licensing fee or doing something else would help these businesses to succeed we want to hear about it we want to work with them so we'll reach out to the chamber of commerce and we'll set a date here in the near future but, uh, you know, when they succeed, the town succeeds. So it's important. Uh, that's all I have. Sounds good. Happy Labor Day. Yep. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, everybody.